I'm a huge fan of the writings of Graham Hancock with his Younger Dryas Impact Theory yeah. and yeah. how he has recently had major cancellation attempts, especially with his Netflix documentary series, Ancient Apocalypse, I think. Yep. Bad name choice, I think. But anyway, oh man, how people have come after him for basically Hitler at this point. For decades. <laughs> for decades he's been dealing with that crap. And I've been following him since just shortly after. After he got started writing his first one about the Ark. And mm, then, uh, okay. The, so you're familiar uh, with him. Then he, oh yeah, I'm a big fan. I've listened to a bunch of his books. I've read a bunch of his books. And I got to see him at a book signing in the Boston area one time. Oh shit. Fine. And that dude gives the best hugs of any human being really? I've ever met in he my looks life. looks like he would. Because like a genuine hug. <laughs> he gets completely into it. And you could just feel his acceptance of you right. going through your chest. And it was short, but it was as long as I wanted it to be. Apparently he didn't shove me off because I'm a hugger and I asked him if I could have a hug. And he was like, I yeah, love there's it. a picture of it on my Facebook. The world but needs more hugs. If you ever get a chance to hug Graham Hancock, do it. I would very much appreciate that. Yeah, <laughs> that'd be a very cool experience. <laughs> yeah, do it. No, I love that guy. And crap, we could do a whole episode talking about just yeah, we could. I his theories. He is. It's funny the face that bravery sometimes takes is a feeble little old man. I'm not afraid to say it. He's not this big, scary Conan esque figure. He's just this little, little old guy, and. He's taken on the world. He's going through very intense experiences left and right. He's a devout psychonaut who I value his experiences to the... Uh, that's another subject I'm very into is uh, <clears throat> traditional plant medicines, I guess you could call it. Is i I'm, I'm, I've always found interesting. Um, yeah, Graham Hancock's a cool figure. Sorry, that's... A... No, this is great. And we're going this direction anyway. Um but Graham Hancock, his greatest crime is asking questions. Heresy is what that's called, my friend. Heresy. And academia has been <laughs> all over him. Like watching his debate with Zahi Hawass of the Egyptian <laughs> Antiquities is a joke. <laughs> Zahi just yells at him and then storms off. And I will not listen. All, <laughs> like, okay. Basically what Graham's arguments all boil down to is, here's this picture of this unexplained thing. What do you think it was? Mm-hmm. And people just hate him for where the details lead him. And no, I love the dude. anger. It's anger, too. It's not even just like, oh, that dude's full of shit. That's a passive kind of stance. It is fueled, fiery, emotionally driven. Like, you are wrong for I am right. It's holier than thou from the tip to the toes. Because oh. he's threatening their dogma, their <clears throat> worldview, and... Frankly, most of the people he's probably getting that from are midwits. And midwits are the most dangerous type of people I've in the world. I've never heard that term, midwit. Oh, really? So you, you got just loosely dumb people, midwits, and then really Oh, people. got it. Got it. Yeah, they're the, the ones in the middle. They're smart enough to where you could teach them a lot of stuff, but they're not smart enough like the geniuses to really master it or understand it. Mm -hmm. So they know that the thing works this way. But if you ask them, why does it work that way? They start going and mm -hmm. they melt down because they can't handle it. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> and how many interviews have you seen with Zahi Hawass? Well, if you've seen one, you'll know. I thought you were asking for a number. I'm like, OK, well, uh... <laughs> he's definitely a midwit that's got a good gig. He's had a comfortable career. People have him on TV all the time. Now. You got to yell at Maury Povich, but he's a douche. You can timestamp that. He doesn't and... seem pleasant to be around by any metric of scale. He seems like a Debbie Downer at best. <laughs> <laughs> oh. And kind of a curmudgeonly jerk at worst, yeah. <laughs> yeah, whereas Graham Hancock, he's very open-minded. Even if you're being belligerent to him, he'll say, okay, well, let's explore that and see, does that mm -hmm. explain this thing I'm trying to show you a picture of, but also at the Boston signing, his wife, Santa, was there. Oh, and cool. She was such a contrast because he's this dopey, happy, smiley guy talking about stuff he loves. And then you had this short Tamil woman just over there, like <laughs> glaring all the time, had the sourest I love face. it. <laughs> and he said that he loves that she runs him and keeps him on schedule because I think he was running it's long important. at one point. And she was like, Graham. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> 
But, Jack Kirby's talked about similar things. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, a, a good woman can be pleasant, but she also needs to be able to be mean. And I would be lost in a ditch somewhere without my wife's guidance and harsh right? whipping hand. 